Thank you. We are now back in uh, open session. Mr. Manager, public address to the board. Do you have people that have signed for that? Yes, sir. We have several names. We have, um, first name is Richard Rizzuti. If you'll come to the podium, please. And Mr. Chairman, I'll keep your time at three minutes per speaker. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Richard Rizzuti. I reside at 623 Jordan Drive, Greenville, North Carolina. I want to thank you all once again for reconsidering the lease agreement. Uh, again, I'm not a confrontational person. This is difficult uh, for me to come before you once again. But in my opinion, a real injustice has occurred here. As you know, we were the most recent owners of the property in question, the Parker's Landing uh, uh, lease property. In contrast to the Parker family, we were forced to evacuate during the flood. And although we were not forced to sell to the federal government at a greatly reduced amount, it was the best option for us at the time. We've been waiting now 10 years for this lease option to be available while the county decided about using the property for a park. We were only notified by the county because the Parkers, who were non-adjacent property owners, expressed interest in the lease. But according to your rules, adjacent property owners have first priority. How the Parker family found out about the lease prior to the adjacent property owners is unclear. I suspect Mr. James notified them. He would have had firsthand knowledge. I immediately filed a complete ap application, whereas the Parkers filed an incomplete application eight to nine days later. Right then and there, we had met two of your top stipulations to receive the lease according to your rules. We were adjacent property owners, and we had, our first, we had the first application. We should have been granted the lease, just like the other 89 recipients of these properties. This issue should have never come to this board. But Mr. James prevented that from happening. It became obvious that he wanted the Parkers to have this lease. According to your rules, an appeal meeting was held, and I went to that meeting. Mr. Elliott, Mr. Rhodes, and Mr. James were present, but neither Mr. Parker nor any member, member of his family were present. We waited 30 minutes while Mr. James made cell phone calls trying to get them to come. No one showed. Once again, we should have definitely been given that lease. But Mr. James prevented Mr. Elliott and the county from doing that. He stated that he wanted it to come before this board. Now, prior to that board meeting, I didn't call each of you. I was advised to take the time and write a letter describing our position for you to review at your agenda meeting the week before. I have a copy of that letter dated July 4th, 2011, and I hand delivered it to the county manager's office on the Tuesday before your Thursday agenda meeting. It's my understanding you didn't receive that letter. I have literally done everything in my power to obtain this lease. I have met all of your first priority rules, but unfortunately, I do not have a Commissioner James fighting for me. This has been an uphill battle. Finally, and also of crucial importance to take note, by granting this lease to the Parker family, you are leasing property with no ready access for them. The easement drawn out on paper necessitates plowing some sort of driveway that ranges from a an eighth to a quarter mile through dense woodland and destroying that protected area. We, however, have a quarter mile driveway already paved on our property that continues onto the lease property right up to where our house used to stand. I urge you to consider these issues, review your lease buyout property rules, and reconsider your vote. Thank Thanks, you, sir. Who's next? Next we have Meredith Rizzuti. Good morning. Morning. wife of Dr. Rizzuti. Um, I wanted to take time today because I didn't last time and I think the history of the land is forgotten sometimes. You heard from the Parkers that they used to live there and they have history there as well. But I wanted to remind um, the commissioners that our family were the last ones that were there. And it was a powerful day to leave that house and you'll hear from the Glennons but they built that house and Rich bought it for his late wife and we raised two children there and they still go and visit that property and we cut daffodils every spring and knowing that I had to pick up the phone and call them after the last July meeting and say sorry guys they've given the lease to people that haven't lived there in I don't know 50 100 years and you can't go anymore it was a really hard thing to do so I wanted you guys to consider that and hear that out. 
that those kids lost their mom there. That was our first place that we lived after we got married. We left in a boat, yet you are very quickly giving that land for somebody else to use happily. And I just think that those rules were put in place for a purpose and a reason, and the people that walked away from their homes never to return have that priority for a reason. And you need to consider that and think about that. And I sit with these kids here and think they're going to see justice. And the last time we were here, we did not see justice. So I ask you to reconsider and think about that when you go home to your home tonight. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Okay, next we have Alice Glennon. Good morning. Thank you for um, the attention you're giving us today. We did live there before the Rizzutis, and I, um, my husband and I built the house that was destroyed by Floyd, and also designed the road, and I personally planted just about every tree that is out there now. I mean, I know where every live oak is that I put in the ground. I know it's, it's got a name. A lot of, um, we spent a lot of love, a lot of time taking care of that land. And um, we own the property on either side of the land in question now. This, uh, that the Parkers are trying to get this um, lease on. And we were not consulted in any way regarding this. Um, I would just really hate to see the trees that I did plant destroyed. Um, I would hate that um, fairness was not shown to the Rasutis because I do think they did everything in their power to follow the rules, regulations, and everything designed by our county to protect people like this and their rights. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next. Next we have Tom Glennon. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Uh, very quickly, I just wanted to make it clear that uh, I assembled that property almost 25 years ago, and in no instance did I buy any of it from the Parker family. I bought it from, from people who, who put, and it was a derelict property at the time we bought it, and as Alice told you, uh, she planted the trees, and we pushed the dirt around and made the berms, built the house that the Rasutis talked about, and uh, and and it was it was ours. We still own property adjacent to on on three sides of this uh, contested property. We plan to build there, and as they do, and uh, and uh, it's it's just uh, I think some things have happened that. You didn't have the facts on, and I think that this needs to be reconsidered. Uh, I have paid taxes continuously on that and an additional 125 acres that that, we, that is still in the control of uh, the Rasutis, uh, Alice and I, and my children. So uh, I just want you to consider that. This, uh, we would have put in the application for the lease. Alice and I didn't do that out of deference to the respect for the Rasutis because we felt that it was that it was their right to have it. So I think it's just all been a misunderstanding and uh, I apologize for that to the Rasutis that I haven't been here sooner. Uh, I've known Mr. James since I first bought the property. He was one of the first people that I went to see. We always had a good relationship and uh, I think that uh, I would ask both Mr. James and the rest of you to think about it, reconsider it, and uh, that justice be done. I appreciate it, and thanks to all of you for being here. Thanks, sir. All right, and I believe this is on the, uh, somewhere else on the agenda, is that correct? Yes, for items for decision later on, first all item. Right. All right, uh, you want, is it desired the board to move that up now? Or? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. I think it would be good. All right, let's go forward then. Mr. Chairman, yes. I'd like to ask a question. Um, I understood from what Mr. Glennon said that the Rizzutis plan to build on the property. I think you said that, that you all were planning to build eventually. And are you all planning to build or sell? Well, Could you come to the... 
Mike, please. Uh, we were just out at the property yesterday. It needs some cleanup, obviously, after the hurricane, but uh, we, we, we can't build on the leased property, but our adjacent property, uh, since we own it, we do have the ability to build on it. And our hope and dream is actually to build some sort of cabin complex for a ministry refuge. Uh, I've, I've not mentioned that to the board before because I, I, I don't know definitely that we'll do that, but we, we really do have that uh, as a hope. Uh, we, we hope to use it as uh, ministry prayer refuge. There's a prayer refuge in, uh, in Greene County uh, outside of Snow Hill that uh, we go to, our church uses. Uh, we'd love to have something closer, and that's been something uh, on the radar. So something out there. It's not something new that we've come up with. I've actually talked to Billy Parker about it during the negotiations prior to, to coming to, before this board. So um, that's our thought right now. Okay, so if you do build something, having the lease on the front property, even if you don't have the lease, if the county retained it, you could still use that because that would be part of the, the, the lease property that's in front. Yes, of your if, property if, that you own. Yeah, if the county retained it and used it as a oh, park, we would certainly be able to allow those who are coming out to our property on some type of ministry prayer refuge access that. But, but if Because no building can go on the lease property exactly. at all, and I think everybody understands that. I just want to say yeah. that so the citizens change, know, and yeah. that being leased property adjoining your property, if the county retained it, it would be as it is and anyone could use it because that was kind of the intent when we were talking about it before. Correct, but, uh, but our concern is if another family is using it and they're having family get-togethers, yes, then it would be a little bit more difficult to use it as a ministry or yes. prayer refuge. So. Understand, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Manager, don't you have some other information that follows with this? Yes, sir. After the printing of the agenda, which we printed um, last Thursday and distributed, we did receive a letter from Billy Parker and it was addressed to the chairman and to the Board of County Commissioners. And basically in this letter, he is asking that um, the lease agreement that was approved on July the 11th is asking that it says it is my desire for this to be, um, um, basically he wants to terminate the lease agreement. There is a 90 day clause in there that allows either him or the county to terminate the lease with 90 days notice. He is asking to have that 90 day notice period waived and he would like the the termination to be immediate if the board would agree to that. And this is dated um, September 27th, this letter. Okay, I say move that um, we accept that um, agreement with uh, the Parker family. So Mr. Uh, Chairman, yes. I'd like to put an amendment to the uh, original motion that has been presented, if I may. You make a substitute motion, is that what well, you want to do? Well, it would be the same as hers, but I add more to it. Make, make your motion. We'll, okay. We'll call it a substitute motion. Okay. I move to accept Billy Parker's request to return to Parker's land and lease and to hold the land for future recreation purposes or whatever needs to be done and not to lease it to any individual person. Second. In discussion on that, uh, Mr. Williams. Uh, I, I've given this law thought over the weekend. And I don't understand the purpose of now holding the property when we were going to lease the property. It, it, we were ready to move on it, and now we're not. I, I don't understand that. And, and, and I know some of uh, Mr. James' issue with use of the property uh, for the community north of the river, but that's not part of our policy. Our policy is that the uh, adjacent property owners we get the first option on it, and I think we should stick with our policy. And, and I think that if we're not going to stick with the policy, we, we really need to schedule some uh, in the next meeting to readdress the whole rule. But it just seems we were ready to move on it. We had decided on it. Mr. Parker has withdrawn his application, and so now I don't understand why we're going to sit on it when we were ready to lease. And, and the current applicant does fall within the parameters of what we've asked and, and that's what that's what I looked at um, each family has history any anyone that's ever lived there has history there
But when we boil it all the way down to the county's policy, we have a basic policy on what we're going to do with the property. And, and it almost seems, and I know it's not, but it seems punitive to now sit on it when we were ready to move and now we're now we just want to hold that's all i've got thank you for time mr chairman uh malvin and then eugene thank you mr chairman I, I think it was commendable for billy parker to come and and try to uh, and, and terminate this agreement i think uh, he, he's seen something in that that uh, apparently that he he wanted to uh, justify by termination and, and, and having said that, I, I think it's uh, only right now, and, and I agree with Mr. James that we we just ha uh, retain that property back with the county. Now, it's not it's not saying that this property will permanently be retained for, for in forever. Uh, it may be another reconsideration that we might 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 be able to do this. But I think as of now, that is a proper way to do it, and uh, I certainly uh, support Mr. James's uh, motion. You say something, Mr. Jane. The only thing I want to say, and the speakers up here said this, there's a great deal of history in Parker's Landing. Rogers used to come up there. They had to put the farmers would get fertilized. But the main thing that I'm concerned and so forth, that pathway that went from Highway 33 went straight to Parker's Landing for hundreds of years. People from all around would drive down there. It was a fishing off point that people would go down there fishing and things such as that. But uh, there's no need of me saying that. There is a great deal of history there, and I know that. And this is the very thing that the young lady says uh, that it's, it, it her people or anybody now, if we keep it, it would be open for anybody to go there. And somebody needs to be really in charge of it, and the county is in a position to be in charge of it and make sure that it is protected and whoever wanted to use it could take and use it. That's all I have to say, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, just a minute, just a minute. Uh, is James here? James Rhodes? Yes, sir. Will you come up, please, James? Uh, has Dr. Azuzi followed the rules set forth by your planning board for leasing this property? Yes, sir. He now has a petition or request in for it, and he's done what he's supposed to do with that? Yes, sir. Is I, do I understand it correctly when the rules and regulations said that we were to give the prior owner and adjoining owners first priority? Correct. All right, sir. Anybody else want to ask James another I, question? I want to just say one thing, and um, <coughs> before we vote, um, today is the first time that I can recall. I've not, I have not been back and looked at the minutes that we have heard the what we heard when we made the decision, or what I heard personally when we made the decision and giving it to the Parkers was that we had done something wrong, we had broken the law, we had broken a rule, and, and that's all I heard in emails and letters and responses. Today, I heard an appeal that I felt like came more from the heart and heard some other things. And I, I think you can understand some of the feeling when, I mean, we really, we checked with the attorney, we did not break the law or break a rule when you, you know, you put forth um, a process that you're going to use and that process, if we don't have to do it because it's not like a law, so it hasn't been broken. And I'm always, I was raised to, to follow rules and guidelines and being an educator, that's what I've done most of my life. But it's not the first time in many situations where a decision has been made that didn't go with the rule, but it wasn't like breaking in or breaking the law. And I think if the approach had been a little different in the beginning and not so much admonishing the people who were making the decision based on you know the, what they did and what the feelings were about why it was done. Uh, one commissioner's name comes up all the time in relationship to this. 
but there are nine of us. And I was not spoken to about it at all, but by one person until after it was all over. And in the presentation the last time when the vote was taken, I didn't hear what I heard today from uh, the Rizzutis and the Glennon. So I just wanted to make sure that that was said, that it was, a, it was kind of a different atmosphere. So sure. thank you for that opportunity. Uh, just a minute. Dr. Rizzuzzi, do you want to reply to something that was said from up here? Yes. Just come back up here, please. I understand the substitute motion that's on the table uh, regarding the county keeping that property, but there is a significant problem with that as far as public access. Right now, that is an isolated piece of property uh, where the only access to it is through our property. There is an easement, but as I said, that easement would have to be carved out. The public cannot get to it. So if you keep it as a county property, it can't, it can't reliably be used. Unless you're planning on building some driveway that's a quarter mile long through wooded area that's uh, been drawn out as the easement. And in reference to Ms. Ward, we appreciate all the work you're doing. I have no negative, I don't have anything against anybody here, nothing personal. It was just a, a series of events that we got wrapped up into, and I'm, I'm sorry this has occurred. And us too. Melvin, and then uh, Jimmy, and then Glenn. Uh, I, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to ask our county attorney, uh, Ms. Gallagher, what, 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 what is your recommendation uh, based upon what you've heard? I can tell you from a legal perspective that you're, you're all familiar with the, what your policy requires. Um, it's been my position that the, the two motions, well, the two motions that are on the floor are both lawful actions. In other words, as I understand the motion that was made and seconded, your original motion is to accept the um, requested termination effective immediately, and that is a, a lawful option for you to follow if that's what you choose to do and to do only that. Um, that would result in the county retaining ownership of the property, um, and that is lawful. That would essentially return you to the position you were in prior uh, for the last 10 years. The substitute motion that's on the, f uh, on the f floor um, is also a lawful motion. It, it takes the original motion a little bit further um, and, and eliminates um, the ability without further board action to lease the property elsewhere because it, that motion involves two steps. One, it accepts the termination, and second, it leaves the property at this time in the county's ownership and control. Um, it is also a lawful option, if the board so chooses, um, to accept the termination um, from Mr. Parker and to lease it to the Rizzutis as another lawful option on the table. So it's not my role to tell you what to do, but to stop you if I observe that something is unlawful. Um, you have a policy in place that may guide you, and you have the ability through a majority action of the board to vary from a policy if you believe the facts support that. And so um, I hope that answers your question. Uh, Jamie, did you want to say something? Maybe? All right, Jamie and then Glenn. Then okay. Then. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I wanted to say that I thank Mr. Parker for his willingness to do the gentlemanly thing here and ask for his lease to be terminated. And of course, I support that because that is his request. I would also like to say that I appreciate Dr. Rossetti for, for, his, for his desire to have a place of meditation there. Uh, I had not heard that before, but I think that is a great idea. In addition to having it available for those kinds of activities, if someone wanted to use it like a scouting group or a boys and girls club uh, wanted to use it for recreational or for educational purposes, I'm assuming that you would allow that also if you were given this lease. Okay. So then it would be kind of open for the community use and you would, uh, would have the, uh, the responsibility of it. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Glenn and then Ethan. I just want to address just a couple of things that the one about uh, Mr. Parker, no doubt, is a class act, and his family is very important to Pitt County. Uh, the, if no matter what side you're on the issue, uh, you can't deny that. And as far as Mr. James' motivation, I will tell you that from personally knowing him, his motivation is one thing and one thing only to people, and, and I know that from knowing him personally. And he will fight. 
tooth and nail for what he believes is right for the people. But when it comes to the history of the area, everything has a history. The land my house sits on used to be somebody's farm at one time, and people make real estate decisions over time. We have a policy. I think it's our job as government to boil everything down to the least common denominator, which is we have a policy, we have an applicant, we have a previous uh, leasee who's withdrawn his application. I think it's proper that we accept it because he's done the gentlemanly thing, as Commissioner uh, Garris has said, and that we move forward and follow our policy and continue with the lease. And just to make things hard on the clerk and the attorney, I'll make a substitute motion that we accept Mr. Parker's uh, lease uh, withdrawal termination and that we stick to our policy and grant the lease uh, as asked to the Rizzutis, who are the most recent owners and adjacent property owners, if that's proper, Madam Attorney. I'm not sure. Patriot, I'll substitute. 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 Um, uh, unless one of the motions on the floor were withdrawn, um, we don't, your rules I'll don't allow I'll take away my motion because Mr. James included my motion in his motion, which was just to accept the um, uh, Parker request. And is the second to your motion also withdrawn? Just a minute. Uh, Did you say? Mr. Yeah, Garris seconded yes, your yes, motion. Yes. Would that second that. also yes. be withdrawn? Yes. That then procedurally would convert Mr. James's yes. motion that's seconded Attorney by Melvin Melvin's. to the only motion on the floor. Um, so the substitute motion would be in order then, is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Right. Now, yes. we want to get back here. We've got it. Sure. Mr. Chairman, there's that's a second to it. That, do we, do do we have a second it? to the substitute motion? I'll second it. All right. Now, with Ephraim, then Dave. When uh, FEMA bought it. this property out, did you have the option to reject the offer? Yes, we did. As I stated, do I need to go up there? And speak? Please. Yes. Um, as I stated, we, we were forced out during the flood because our house was filling with, with water, but when FEMA offered, we did have the option to not accept their offer. But when we looked at the, the difference between trying to rebuild the house versus what FEMA had to offer, it was certainly the better option to, to go with what FEMA, FEMA had to offer, even, even though it was an offer that uh, amounted to about half the value of the home. In effect, you took the FEMA offer, and now you're asking us to rent it to you for a dollar for 10 years. Is that correct? It's, a, it's, it's available just like the Parkers are asking to rent it for a, a dollar a year. I mean, if, if the county is going to offer it, we definitely have an interest in it, just like anyone would have an interest in it, but we're trying to abide by your priority rules. Right, uh, Mr. Chairman. They're trying to find out what you folks want done with the property. What you want done, Doc? Uh, again, make y'all that'll satisfy y'all. That's what I'm trying to find out. Yes, we we own 20 acres that's adjacent to the property, and this 20 acres includes a driveway that we pri we used uh, prior to the flood to access our house, which was on. The property in question. Uh, the leased property obviously cannot be built on uh, according to county rules. Now we do have the option to build on our 20 acres and as I, as I was explaining before and I can't give you a guarantee because I don't know if I have the funding, I don't know if I'll be led to do this, but we do have hopes of developing some type of ministry center or a prayer refuge out there just like they have in Greene County outside of Snow Hill. Thank you, Doc. Uh, we have a motion and a substitute motion. Procedurally wise, we vote on substitute motion first. Now, everybody understand where no, we are? Yes, sir. Will, All right. And, and I just note on your system that some have already um, entered, and I'm not sure that, that what they were entering it toward. Well, clear this. Clear this, please. The only way to clear this is for you all to press a button. All right, m m press a button and let's clear. Yeah. Any button, Any I believe button. it said. Any button you want to press and confirm it. All right, now we cleared. Yeah. Cleared. Mr. James and, and Dr. Johnson. Mr. James, if you can push one more time. Just, 
in the bush. Tom, that's right. <laughs> Is that right? Come Take on. knowledge that rises to the water. Thank you. All right, now that's clear. That's now clear. Now we've had them. We we want to repeat the the motion first, then the substitute motion. Uh, the first motion is to accept the lease termination agreement from Bailey Parker and for the county to hold the property for future use. That's Mr. James' motion. Who seconded that? McLaughlin. Melvin. All right. Okay, now next subject motion by Mr. William. Seconded by Commissioner Garris is to accept the termination of the lease agreement, agreement from Billy Parker and to lease the property to the Rizzuti family. All right, now we're going to vote on subject motion first. Ready to vote? That's your motion. Yeah. All right. We got it. Substitute motion passed. Original motion dies. All right. Let's move on. Thank you, Doc. Now, what one did we vote on? I mean, what? <laughs> You just voted on the substitute motion, which has the effect of accepting the termination and leasing it to the Rizzutis. I don't want to vote that way. Okay. So All right. Now that's his vote. I'll fall. Let's change my vote. Okay. So you. Um, I wanted the county to retain the ownership a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it passed seven to two with Mr. Right. Smith and Mr. I, James. I, 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 I think that there was a mis. mis Understanding of that too, when you said substitute motion, that's, that's right. what we're voting on. Okay. It should have been. You want to change you yours too, the Melvin? Original motion. All right. So the vote, Madam uh, Clerk and Attorney, is uh, seven, seven to two. two. Correct. You got it. Everybody seven. in agreement with that? Three. Three. Ephraim three. said no. Six Melvin said no. All right. but, okay. but you Six should nine. state the, uh, the original motion is what we voted on, not the substitute motion. No, you're, no, you're, no. Your rules of procedure require you to vote on the substitute yeah. motion first. Then if it passes, the, then the. All right. But anyway, I wanted to. Uh, okay. okay. Everybody got nice. where we are now? Yeah. Okay, we're clear for that issue. Have a good day. Now, what's next, Mr. Manager? Next, you have. Um, Items to report, and you have my report, manager's report. First item is your next meeting date, it's October 17th, which will be your next regular meeting on um, Monday the 17th at 6 p.m., then November 7th at 9 a.m. Um, item B, a Hurricane Irene status report update. Um, not a whole lot to report here other than we have been meeting with FEMA, um, working with them to make sure we have our correct documentation to pull down the public assistance dollars for overtime, for debris removal, and all the activities that were associated with Hurricane Irene. Uh, the transfer station has been open, um, extended hours for the last two, three plus weeks. Um, this past weekend, yesterday was the first day that we didn't open on Sunday, had communicated with the city of Greenville and didn't have enough trucks to justify us ha having it open. But we are back to pretty much back to the, the, the normal hours that we've had uh, at the transfer station. Convenience sites are still open for the public to utilize those to bring their debris there as well. Um, East Carolina Village of yesteryear is asking the inviting the board for a tour and we have nailed down that date and time they're inviting the board of commissioners out on tuesday october the 11th at 4 p.m to village to tour the village and um, basically take a walking tour of, of what they've done since the county gave them the land and they've relocated out there um, we'll have the the clerk will remind you of, of that tour if assuming you're available to attend um, item d just a reminder about the pitt county fair that does begin today um, October 3rd and runs through Saturday the, the 8th and there is a um, flagpole ceremony tonight uh, kind of an opening ceremony at the flagpole I guess is what it formally is called and um, the board has been invited to that and I believe that there's an activity after after that 5 p.m. 5 p.m. and then item E is really not new information but it has not been formally recognized in a board meeting the winter fire district representing the Winterville Community Rural Fire Association and the the board's decision about a year ago to allow them to be um, spun off as a, a new nonprofit serving the winter fire district for fire service did receive its new ISO rating and is back to the, the rating that they enjoyed when the, the town and the, the um, rules were combined as one unit. Um, I will say that the, the new rating actually because they're now using what they call the hydrant method to rate rather than no, they're using the whole method rather than the hydrant that 25 percent or more of the people who are within five miles of the fire station are now benefiting from the lower rating and um, should see a 
a decrease on their um, homeowner's insurance. Did want to note as well that nobody should see their homeowners' rates go down to what they were because technically all across Pitt County, all homeowners went up by, the insurance went up by some factor due to um, a rating increase, but there should be some decrease associated with moving from the nine back down to the six for those who are within the five mile district in this fire insurance district. That's confusing, but just wanted to, to throw that out there. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Gage. I'd like to make a statement about that. First of all, I'd like to congratulate the winner of a rural fire district for doing an outstanding job in getting their rating uh, back down to a six. That is uh, a task that they worked hard to accomplish and I appreciate the efforts of every one of them getting those rates back down. It has been a major uh, challenge for us and for the uh, citizens that live in that community over the last years getting these in uh, increased uh, insurance premiums, but hopefully we will now see those go down and they will go back to the six. And as our manager pointed out, there's about 600 homes in that winter rural district that will now enjoy a six rating that have never enjoyed a six rating before. And I, again, I'd just like to express my appreciation to the winter fire district and all others uh, in the county who work to make that go back to a six. Beth, I believe you want to respond. Just that I, I want to thank the board for agreeing to let send a letter to the group that was reviewing the information that was gathered. Um, and that was a tedious process uh, for sending that letter to the powers that be. It had to go through a rigorous process in Raleigh. I don't know where else it had to go. New Jersey. New Raleigh. Jersey and all over. And it came down, um, what, two weeks ago? And usually they were projecting January. So thank you, commissioners, for supporting that. Anybody else want to comment on that? I'd like to know just what did it do? What percentage did it drop? I mean, I've never I've got a lot of stuff insured. It depends I don't, on the insurance. It's, it depends upon, depends upon who you're insured with, what you're insuring. The, the rate increase for those, those people that had rate increases somewhere around 25, 30, 35 percent rate increase going from the six to the nine. Now, again, now that it's changed effective December 1st, any policy that renews December 1st or thereafter should see a, a decrease. It probably won't come back down that same factor because, like I said, all insurance across all property in Pitt County increased because of um, the Department of Insurance and the, the insurance commissioner rate increases that were going on. I think on average, probably all property, as I understand, all property insurance probably increased more around 10 percent all across North Carolina due to what was going on in Raleigh. So folks, are, like I was trying to say originally, folks are not going to see their their property insurance as their policies renew, come back all the way down to the point where it was, but they should see and enjoy some decrease. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, there, there is a table on the Department of Insurance webpage under the uh, fire marshals page, and it has a comparison of insurance premiums on it. For, a, for like $100,000, and for $100,000, a class six would be a, a like about an average, there are, three, there are three numbers here, but it would be an average of about $150,000 less than a class nine. So it is pretty significant. So if you have a $200,000 house, you're talking well, about a $300 company, difference. The insurance company is what determines that a great deal. Absolutely. Sure. So Absolutely. You, those figures you got there, they will vary completely. But they are uh, interviews from three different insurance agents. Yeah. It could vary also depending upon your risk and the number of claims you have submitted in the That's past exactly as well. That's right. so, sure. a number of factors. These insurance, insurance companies, they, boy, they can do just about what they want to do. But what I'm saying is all of the... Uh, people that have expressed concern about their premiums over the last year were told by their insurance agent that it was all because of the Board of Commissioners and this, uh, this rate change. And, I, and, and you're right, there are other factors involved in those that have called me with concerns. I've asked them to go back to their insurance agent and have them to break down the, the total delta and there was more in it than just a rate change. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, if not, uh, 
Ready to go. Yes, sir. Item number two under items report, performance measurement evaluation. There are three things that are mentioned in this agenda abstract. Um, as you're aware, we've been reporting to you on performance measurement for um, a good number of years now. And the document that is in your packet that looks like it's the blue bound document is the document that we have reported to you um, annually, and I think even semi-annually in terms of our different performance indicators. All the work that we've done in the past year is trying to make this document more usable for the board, for staff, and for the public. Because, I mean, this is a good document, but we've got some, some work to do to make it more user-friendly. And the two projects that Melanie's going to talk about in association with this are all groundwork to make this, um, again, more user-friendly. So, Melanie, I'm going to turn this to you. Yep. <clears throat> uh, about 18 months ago, the county received uh, something called a Trailblazer grant, which enables you to work and take this document and create something that you can use publicly that the public um, can better understand and, and like Scott said it provides a snapshot we engaged East Carolina Univers University's uh, Center for Survey Research um, and Mandy Lancaster to help us do a survey with the community and then we turned the survey results into focus groups to try and better understand what the community would like to see and what they already knew about what the county did. So also in your packet, you should have the survey results and the focus group results. What we were doing was gauging if they knew how we shared our information, if they knew about our website, if they knew about the TV channel, if they knew about the ad in the Sunday or in the Saturday paper, did they ever notice on the back of their tax bill all of the the county information and what what was it you know that would that would help them the results of this survey now became what you should have here which is the performance scorecard which <clears throat> the very first edition which is is this tobacco colored one that you have here talks about how we took a year to survey the community um, we are going to move to the more visuals in revenues and expenditures, and we, we're going to use this stoplight to talk about some of the goals the departments had and how successful they were at achieving them. Um, and you'll start seeing these when we go out and speak to rotaries, civic groups, you know, Kiwanis, um, scout groups, even, even some of the high school history classes or local government classes. This is what we'll take with us, which will give them a quick snapshot, along with something like our budget in brief. Um, Mandy Lancaster with the university was supposed to be here with us today and she um, called this morning and has, has had something come up and is not going to be here. We can schedule her back if you'd like. What we heard from the citizens though was the more we educate, the better they understand the actions that you have to take. And um, I think that was the resounding, uh, the more you educate us, the better off we are, the better we are able to support the actions that you take, whether that's cutting a department's services or asking for a tax increase or understanding what revaluation means. So it's been a good year. Um, I think this document is, is very easy to understand. And this is one of the handouts because as the manager mentioned, with the fair starting this week, the county has a booth at the fair that will be manned every night by department heads. And um, we'll actually be passing out the scorecard as part of our presentation this week. Do we have a motion to approve as so moved. moved? Second. Any discussion? Just vote. Thank you, Mel. Mr. Chairman, motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. All right, any discussion? All right, let's vote. And if you'll finish voting on okay, that's your first. Now you're clear to vote your second. All right, now, uh, David. Page 114, number two. This is the first response program of Noel Lee and actually Alan Everett. I believe Alan's going to make a presentation this morning. Good morning. <coughs> I'm here to present the uh, fire response program and ask for your consideration of approval. A desire for such a program was expressed by several county fire departments. As a result of that, a committee was formed uh, to develop guidelines for such a uh, fire response program. And in forming a committee, basically the committee was comprised of the county fire and EMS associations, as well as the uh, county medical director's office, as well as county staff. 
uh, a document was created, uh, and as a result, the program has been approved by the county fire and EMS associations, along with the EMS oversight committee, as well as the uh, medical director. The program, in, in, in summary, is really designed to allow participating fire departments to be dispatched to cardiac-related calls within their fire response district as determined by our emergency medical dispatch protocols, ultimately aiding the EMS response to an individual in need. Fire department personnel will be trained in CPR and the use of AEDs, automated external defibrillators. This is a voluntary program for fire departments um, that would like to participate, and participation is not mandated by all of the departments. Um, this program, if it is approved by the board this morning, would replace a similar program that was adopted back in 1986. Now, the 86 document was reviewed during the committee's work to create this policy. Um, and the committee found that this policy was in a sense outdated, that being the 1986 edition. So this morning I would ask that you adopt the uh, fire response program that you have before you and repeal the 1986 document. Mr. Gash. Mr. Chairman, I would like to say that I appreciate the uh, fire departments for being willing to participate in this program. It is a voluntary program, so I don't know how many will volunteer to participate. But it is a good program because it, impro it improves and increases our EMS coverage throughout the county. So I'd like to make a motion that we approve this. I second it. Uh, in discussion, if not, let's vote. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, John or Dave? Dave. You got Dave. it. You got it. Yes, sir. Good morning. I'm here to, uh, to ask um, for approval to purchase a new compactor and install a new compactor at the uh, transfer station. We opened bids on September 22nd for a new waste transfer loading system compactor. Uh, in your documents, you, get, you do have the bid tabulations, and I will go through that. Finance, um, financing for this, excuse me, finance has been working on the financing of this through the LGC. Um, this will be a loan, that big loan that y'all uh, knew about. My part will be paid out of the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund. I have budgeted that money this year in the budget plus interest, so that is in the, in the budget for this year. Um, currently, we have a, trans uh, a compactor at the transfer station now. It's been in existence for about 16 years. The life expectancy of this machine is about 10 years. So we've gotten six years more life out of it than we expected. Um, by the time we put the machine in, it'll probably be, be if, if you prove today, it'll probably be about six, about, about between three and six months before the new machine's built and installed and everything. Uh, the, the use of the compactor does save us some money, uh, saves us manpower. Uh, we don't have to have anybody tarp the loads. We don't have to have anybody um, pack down the loads, trash, um, pick up around the facility is less because the compactor just compacts it into the back of the truck and then the truck pulls away, you shut the doors and, and, it's, and it's in there and then goes off to the landfill. Um, we, we bid the, uh, we allowed the bid documents, the, the bidders to prepare um, two different um, pricing, one to provide a trade-in value for our existing compactor and one without the trade-in. Um, after <coughs> reviewing um, the documents, we would, uh, our recommendation, there's three companies that uh, bid on it. Harris Equipment, which is the company that uh, we, our existing compactor is from. SSI, uh, which is uh, another company. And then uh, JMAC, which is a, <coughs> is a third company that we receive bids. It, on the second page, you can see the, the totals without the trade-in um, vary from 1.6 million to 778. The difference is the machine's a little different. The, the, the cheap or the less expensive machine is a newer design. Um, it's, uh, it, it compacts a little different. Um, and it is our recommendation that we uh, uh, ask that you approve this one. Uh, Phil, John, and myself um, went to go see two different machines of this uh, of this type, 
in two different applications, and we feel very comfortable that this will do what we want it to do. I like it, and it's got less moving parts. It shouldn't break down. And we can also install this one and then take our compactor, our existing compactor, spend a little bit of money on it, and now we'll have two units. One goes down, one needs service, and we can always go back to the other one. I'll be glad to answer any questions. What I would like approval to not today is that we award the contract for 778-294-29 to JMAC to install, purchase and install a new trash compact. John, John, are you saying that three bids were not on the same machine? Well, they, they're how, different. How, go ahead. The, the bid documents were, they're different manufacturers. Um, this machine, uh, the, our current machine has a real large, it, it makes one big loaf and pushes it in the truck. Phil this, knows where I'm getting to. Maybe he wants to answer okay. it. But you, you might as well do away with the bid process if you're bidding on different items. That's what? my point. Are you bidding on specs? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we Even did on have. specs, uh, Glenn, that, that's a different spec. But go ahead. Go <laughs> we ahead. We did have specifications, and uh, these things are built in a factory the same way over and over again, so different people build them different ways. Um, the machine that John has recommended would cost less to to build, and it is a lesser price to us, but it was allowed in our specifications. Um, it uh, it must we, be, you know, when you're getting almost for a third. Yeah what the other two parties were bidding and that's that's what was uh, of course I, I think that's good business if it accomplished your what you want to do with it. Yeah, we do believe that this is the most efficient way for us to go over the long haul. Now did someone else have a question? Maybe I'm the only one. Uh, I was uh, going to say that I was very very pleased with the uh, testimony of both of these saying that this $778,000 piece of equipment will meet our needs and do everything we need because I think we had uh, forecasted about one and a half million dollars for this project. So right. anytime we can get a cheaper piece of or a less expensive piece of equipment to do the same job, then I'm surely in favor of that. I think we've already talked about this as a board and we've included it in our capital expenditure. So I'd like to make a motion we approve it. I second it. All right, ready to vote. Any other questions? I've had uh, some concern about people in uh, Aden that the town takes the garbage and takes out to the landfill, or the, uh, the station outside of Aden and dump it in, <coughs> and then there's not room for the people that's out in the community to get there. Um, yes, they do uh, Monday. Monday and Tuesday, they bring a load from from the town, their truck, and dump into it. What the the public is is upset about is it takes them about 15 to 20 minutes to unload it, and to and we make them clean up any mess that they make. Yeah. It's not where they don't have they don't never have a place to put their garbage yeah. because we're aware of it. We he will dump the the compactor first thing before the truck gets there so the compactor is is empty and we dump it again on Tuesday yeah. what well, uh, does, does the city of Greenville do this practice why does uh, the town of Aden take the garbage to this station uh, I, I know this how do you a, justify I, it? This, That's right. I was I was told we justify it because everybody uh, pays the $71 and, and all residential waste comes to our facility free of charge but yeah. this practice was done prior to me getting here and I don't know how it's, to start. It's, it's, our no, the history. <laughs> it's our preference that the municipalities would take it to the transfer station rather than taking it to a convenience site however like John was saying all households pay the $71 per household fee per, per, per unit so we really can't restrict a municipality from bringing it to a, a convenience site. I guess we could have create a rule and tell them they can't, but the only other exception to this is when the town of Bethel, I believe Bethel does once a week, they take it up the, to that convenience the, site. The town of Bethel's private contractor dumps a half a load in the 
Bethel Compactor on Monday mornings. Now we would not allow a, um, a commercial, somebody has a commercial site to dump it in the same manner? No, well Bethel has a, com has a private contractor. That That's for pick households versus but it's, a, a they, it's their residential pickup. Is that what you want to say, Phil? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Jane. All right, but if uh, a, a person goes up there with a, a large amount on it, you at the, at, the, at the station out there, they send them on to Greenville, or even they pay. It, the only time they should be uh, sending them to us is if it's construction and demolition brief. So they can come up there with a pickup load of uh, yes, a sir. big truck. And, and they I've told had, us, I thought that if it was a large truck, that they had to carry the grade. I've, I've had conversations many a time with the site attendant that make sure that they allow them to dump it. If they've got a huge 19-foot, 20-foot trailer okay, full of garbage, right, yes, they that's can. That's good. That was one of the complaints. All right. Do, do we want to approve this as presented? Are we already well, passing? Moved and seconded. Yeah, we have. We voted. Oh, All we voted. right. I'm on my next okay. item then. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's, uh, number four, Dr. Marr. You're going to, oh, you've got. You don't look like Dr. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. Mr. Chairman, for good or ill, I'm filling in for Dr. Mar today. <laughs> uh, I'm here to ask the uh, board to approve the proposed uh, revised fee schedule for the health department. This is for our clinic fees. Uh, we're doing this a little differently based on guidance we've received from the uh, North Carolina Department of Public Health. Uh, really, these proposed fees are to maximize our annual cost settlement with Medicaid. Uh, you'll note in the, in the handout that you have, some of the fees are going up pretty dramatically. That's not many. Most of them are going up a few dollars. A few are actually uh, decreasing. But this is really to maximize our annual Medicaid cost settlement number. We pulled in almost $700,000 last year from our Medicaid cost settlement. Uh, the new criteria to maximize that cost settlement, we need to have our fees set at, uh, at, at or above our cost as determined by the Medicaid cost settlement of a prior year. Uh, typically, we would try to bring uh, fee adjustments to the board during the normal uh, budget process. However, we didn't get the information from uh, Medicaid from the state about our calculated cost of service until mid-July and actually didn't get the report until uh, I think in August. So we, we were precluded from uh, bringing this to the board during the regular budget process. And I'll be happy to attempt to answer any, any of your questions. Any questions? Uh, Dr. Johnson? No question. I approve, um, move approval. Second. <laughs> any further discussion? <laughs> Not less vote. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, next. Next, we have item five, appointment to the Greenville Planning and Zoning Commission. This is on page 141. This is a follow-up to the um, meeting in which Brian Smith was appointed as the regular member. He used to be the alternate, and now you need an alternate on Greenville's Planning and Zoning Commission. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that we appoint Brian Smith, who is the alternate presently, and advertise for the alternate yeah. member seat. You've already done that. This You've is actually... I was just mentioning that that's what you've done previously. Excuse me. This is, is actually this the individual. Mm -hmm. The people you have on the um, oh, applicant interest we list: uh, Wanda Harrington oh, yes. and I'm sorry, George I Curley. did look at that. Are two eligible? What's your preference? One from District Three and one from District Two. I don't know either one of them. Who are they? Uh, Wanda C. Harrington in District Three, as Mr. Garris mentioned, and then you have George Caraway, District Two. Um, I'll move that Wanda Harrington be appointed as our alternate. I do happen to know her. All right. Any other? If not, ready to vote. Uh, jury commission. A commission will appoint, reappoint uh, Dr. Bright. Sir. No others will uh, vote. All right. Child Prevention Team. Make a motion we appoint uh, Detective Chad Suggs to that position. All right, ready to vote. OK. 
Okay, now we're down to the Pitt County Planning Board. Make a motion. Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Make a motion to appoint, uh, reappoint Frank Bradham, Jacob Cox, Wanda Harrington, and William Wood. Second. Ready to vote. All right. Okay. Uh, Dave, you have any comments you want to make today? No, sir. Mr. James. Yes, I want uh, the planning department to come back with us, James, so uh, redo this, uh, such as the thing we had today. A lot of these people, we, uh, and I need to do some talking, uh, and probably on the executive session at the next meeting. Uh, I want to fill you in on some things that evidently some of you don't know about. All right, the next thing I want to say, too, is this, since this is comment, uh, uh, the tax people, I want to know what the kind of taxes they're paying on this property out there, uh, since we know exactly how much money they got for the land and so forth, which is, that comes back to the, the, the manager. Uh, you don't want Melvin. To no comment. Ethan. No. Put that down. Beth. No comment. Thank no you. No comment. Don't. Just briefly, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. the as Liz on with the Pitt County School Board, I'd like to say that my observation uh, in observing school board meetings is that our uh, school board and our superintendent and her staff are, are very diligent in doing their job. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Webb? I just hope everybody will go out and enjoy the fair this week. We're going to have good weather. So I hope everybody will get out there and enjoy that. Thank you, sir. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So All right. So All in favor of votes.